Good morning, and once again, Shabbat Shalom. This morning, we have the wonderful privilege of learning with Rabbi Hillel Silverman. Good morning, Hillel. How are you? Good morning, Rabbi. It's a pleasure to be with you. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. Happy Thanksgiving, Shabbos. This morning's Parshat Vayetze, an important story of Jacob and uh, his adventures. So tell us what to look for in this morning's Parsha. It's good you said Jacob and his adventures, because they really were adventures. Uh, he decided after 20 years with Laban to leave home and to go back to his family, to go back to uh, Laban. He's been there 14 years for two wives and then worked another six years. And so he marches on with his cattle, his possessions, his slaves, his servants, and his wives. And uh, we have the beautiful vision of the ladder, Jacob's ladder. Uh, uh, just before he meets uh, Laban, uh, he has a dream. And in a dream, he sees a ladder which is planted on the earth and the top goes to the heavens. The angels are marching up and down and God is at the top of the ladder. And the Lord appears to, Ab to Jacob and uh, tells him that this will be your land. Uh, you will uh, uh, have... Uh, a, a beautiful life on your land and you will spread out and you will be great. Now, Jacob was fearful. He was alone, lonely. Uh, he left his father. Uh, he, he, he was going to be reunited with his father. He left his family and uh, he took that dream with him. He took the dream of the latter that he would be blessed and he would be great and he would be the father of a nation. In the uh, Navy, in which I served, uh, we had uh, Jacob's Ladder. I don't know if you ever heard of Jacob's Ladder, but it was an actual ladder that was used on s smaller ships, uh, on destroyers. If you would go from a destroyer to the land, you will leave the ship on Jacob's Ladder. On the larger ships, on the aircraft uh, carriers, uh, 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 or the bigger ships, you would not have a ladder, uh, you would have a yang plant. Uh, let's go back now to uh, Jacob's dream. Uh, uh, we all have dreams. I'm sure we do. We dream of the future. We dream of our country. We dream of Israel. We dream of a family. We dream of security. We dream of education. Uh, uh, and let me share with you uh, the idea of Jacob's dream because it can help us. What is a Jewish dream? A Jewish dream is down to earth. Our feet must be planted on the ground must make sense, but the dream must look upwards, look to the heavens, and the angels must be seen. It doesn't say going down, but going up. Angels are olim, going up. Your dream, dream has to have progression, and on the top of your dream must be God. Let's go on now uh, with the Bible story. Jacob comes uh, and meets uh, Rachel at the well. Uh, the well was a favorite spot for people uh, to meet. When I was a teenager in Hartford, Connecticut, uh, we didn't have any wells, but we did have a drugstore. And remember, we used to go to the drugstore, uh, Weaver's Drugstore, and we would meet people. Well, in those days, in biblical days, they met at the well. The well is where everybody gathered. Shepherds would come with their flocks. Uh, uh, they placed a large stone on top of the well to protect uh, the water from those who would uh, uh, steal water or protect the well from insects and little animals who would uh, uh, pollute the well. And this is where uh, David met Rachel at the well. The Bible says that two sisters, that uh, Rachel was beautiful, wonderful, but Leah's eyes, uh, they were uh, translated Tender, tender eyes. Uh, I don't think she had uh, uh, eye trouble. Uh, I don't think she had uh, immaculate degeneration. But according to the rabbis, she would constantly cry. Why did she cry? Because being the older sister, she said she was destined to marry uh, Esau, the older brother. And uh, Rachel was destined to marry uh, the younger brother, Jacob. And so she cried. According to another rabbi, Rachel would smile and would laugh, whereas Leah, who 
had tender eyes, uh, would fetch uh, and complain uh, all the time. So Jacob now goes to the farmer, Leandro, Laban, and he begins to work for Laban. And he says to Laban, uh, it's not right that I serve you for nothing. Uh, what would you like to pay me? And so Laban says, uh, work seven years and you will marry my daughter, Rachel. So he works for seven entire years. And the Bible says the days were yamim achadim. They went by uh, quickly. Well, we would say the opposite. A time was very slow if we're waiting for something uh, to happen that's important. Seven years go by and uh, he uh, marries uh, uh, Rachel. And uh, uh, Laban, of course, uh, substitutes uh, uh, his older daughter, Leah, for Rachel. And so Rachel is married. They have a big party. And in the morning, uh, Jacob wakes up and he sees uh, in uh, his bed, not uh, Rachel, but Leah. Now, we don't know what his reaction was. I suppose we could picture his reaction. When he saw Leah in bed instead of Rachel, he went, ah! I know I pity the underdog and the loser uh, in, uh, uh, in the Bible. Uh, uh, Leah, to me, uh, was an underdog. I feel very sorry, compassionate for her. Uh, Layer is portrayed as being very bitter about Jacob's marriage uh, to uh, Rachel. And it goes on and on that she was bitter and unhappy. Uh, uh, I feel sorry for uh, Esau, who was an, also a loser, an underdog. He came in, you remember, from the hunt. He was hiring, starring, and he uh, sold uh, his blessing as the firstborn to his brother Jacob for a mess of pottage, and then later uh, in life, uh, through the machinations of his mother, uh, Rebecca, uh, he took the blessing of the firstborn from uh, his brother Jacob, and Esau was the one who received it. Now again, I have compassion for Esau. You remember uh, in the Bible, Esau let out a bitter and long cry, Sa'akagadola, umaraba, bitter one. Uh, uh, and then he says to his father, when he learns that his father, Isaac, has already blessed Jacob, he says, Father, do you not have just one more blessing for me? So he was the underdog uh, and the loser. Uh, another loser in the Bible is Hagar. Who is Hagar? Hagar was the handmaiden of a Sarah. She was barren. She wanted Abraham to father a child, which he did, Ishmael. Then a few years later, Isaac is born, and Hagar and Ishmael are expelled from the kingdom. In any event, let's go back to the story. The story now is over seven years of marriage to Rachel, over seven years of additional marriage uh, to Leah, uh, and their sons are born. Eleven sons in those years are born to them, and uh, he uh, increases working for uh, uh, Laban, uh, he has cattle, he has, a, he has a sheep, he has a camels. And after 20 years, uh, Laban comes to a decision that he must, uh, that, uh, that Jacob comes to a decision that he must leave the home. He must split from Laban. He must go back to his father, back to the family. Well, of course, Laban finds out that he has left with his entourage of cattle and possessions and wives uh, and servants. And Laban catches up with him. And Laban says to him, why did you leave without telling me? Were we people uh, that were at night that you have to depart from us? Uh, I would have had a party. I would have had a big celebration for your wedding. Your children are my children. Uh, why did you do this uh, to me? And then the story goes, and why did you steal the trophim from uh, my room. Now, the Trophim, according to uh, the rabbis, uh, uh, were false gods. Uh, we have false gods today, false values, false panaceas. Uh, we have uh, false uh, uh, trail and law. Now, uh, when he starts to argue with uh, Jacob, and incidentally, uh, Rachel did steal 
the so-called trophim and hid them uh, from uh, Laban in the uh, uh, saddle of her camel. Scholars tell us that these trophim were not false gods. They were legal title to possessions. And Rachel wanted Jacob to have legal title to all the possessions and not have her father Laban uh, take them. And so when Laban accuses Jacob of stealing off in the night, uh, Jacob pleads with her, Ma pishiu ma What is my uh, uh, sin and what is my transgression? I have been a faithful shepherd to you. Uh, I was in the, uh, in the in the heat of the summer and in the cold of the winter. For 20 years, you changed my wages time and again. Uh, uh, I made good when the cattle were devoured. Uh, why do you do this to me? And so uh, uh, they split and he returns to his parents. Now, next week, uh, we'll read of how Esau wrestles uh, with the angel. And then we have a reconciliation of his brothers, uh, of Jacob and uh, Esau. Uh, uh, in a way, uh, uh, next week, uh, it vindicated is my compassion and my sympathy for Esau. I've always felt sorry for Esau, but now uh, 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 he's not uh, longer uh, an underdog uh, or uh, uh, unreal. Uh, he is a prince. Because for 20 years, it was terrible hostility between brothers. Uh, Esau was on the verge of killing Jacob, which is why he fled. And now they are going to have a reconciliation. And Esau reconciliates with his brother Jacob. And we'll read next week that they kissed each other, that he brought gifts of cattle uh, to his brother Tamil to camel loads of uh, gifts. And Jacob said, uh, I don't want them. I have enough, my brother. Esau said, I have enough, my brother. You keep them. We'll return together to my father. And so uh, I find that Esau becomes a prince, really, and should not uh, be uh, sympathized with for being a loser. He's not a loser. And the message, of course, is a story for us today in the United States that like Jacob and like Esau, we should reunite. We should read and live together as brothers and sisters. We have our differences, of course we do, but we have a tremendous unity. And that unity is the love of country. So let us be like Jacob and Esau. Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi. Thank you again for your learning and for taking us through these great stories. And I want to wish you and your family a very, very pleasant Shabbos and a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. Take good care. And the same to you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. See you next week.